Hey, welcome to a super hot day here on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's time to start transitioning into our summer garden. Man, it's hot. It's already in the 90s every day, mid 90s. And the tomato plants, most of them have stopped pollinating. Tomato plants don't pollinate well in the heat. So I'm gonna let the fruits that are on my larger tomatoes ripen up and all the little green fruits that are already there, we'll, we'll let those ripen up. Then it's time to take those out. Um, my cherry tomatoes over there that are sprawling, well, they're still probably gonna produce through the summer. I'll leave some of them in because they're really, really delicious and I've harvested a whole lot. Let me show you my harvest. When your weedy tomato garden gives you gold, man, you come out and harvest every day and you can get a ton of these wonderful cherry tomatoes. You can see we got some rain which occasionally will split your tomatoes like that. That's what happens. But I get to go on the hunt down here, like an Easter egg hunt, looking for all these beautiful tomatoes. These are Edox F1 hybrid cherry tomatoes from Johnny Seeds. And they are, at the moment, my most favorite tomato of all time. They're so sweet, they're so good. I just love them so much. And you get tons of them. What to do? when you have a ton of cherry tomatoes. And that's usually the case with these cherry tomatoes. They're so prolific that, uh, you know, you don't know what to do with them all. Well, you can make sauce, you can make pasta dishes. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a pasta dish with this. You can make a nice salad. Most of the time we think of cherry tomatoes, we think of salads, but uh, there's so much more you can do with them. You can make tomato soup, can make tomato sauce. I made a bunch of tomato sauce last year. I had so many of these. I mean, look at them. There's a green one I don't need. Some of these actually are second year. They're hybrids, right? So Johnny Seeds develops these as hybrids and you buy the generation that is has been hybridized. And that usually means that if you grow the seeds from those hybrids, you won't necessarily get the same result the following generation. That would be the F2 generation. Well, some of these plants in here, I grew second generation just to see what would happen. And I tell you, I can't find any difference. All right, that's good enough. We'll get some more tomorrow. There we go, not bad, not bad. So with that harvest, I'll be making an Italian dish tonight and I'll do a separate video on that. It's going to be very delicious. But I've got some other things to start sowing now. So let's go take a look at how we're going to prepare our bed. And we're going to kind of overlap the seasons. I've got peppers and I've got beans. I've got things still growing from the spring garden that will do fine in the heat. But I've got things that are done. We've taken them out. We've got space. So we're going to start interplanting our summer crops. We're going to grow today some okra. We're going to plant some lima beans. We've got other things we can put in, but I don't yet have the space for it. I have to wait for my cucumbers to, to ripen up and be done. And then we'll put in some cowpeas there. So it's time to start summer in earnest. Let's go. First things first, this little end of my bed here, I'm going to flame weed it just to get those weeds out of the blocks. They'll grow back, but I want it to be nice and tidy for planting. And it just makes me feel better. So let's get some flame weeding done. I've set this piece of hardy board up so that I don't burn my pepper plant back here but I can come over here and get these, uh, these uh, weeds here. scuffle hoe and smooth out the soil, break any of those roots, those weeds that are down in there that uh, I burned the tops off. They will come back from the roots. If you have particularly noxious weeds, the nut grass will certainly come back. That nut sedge survives anything. 
if you can get these roots out like that, it just saves you some hassle and some trouble later on. Just gonna soften up the soil to get myself a nice seed bed. I'm gonna put my lima beans in here. This is some really rich soil. I had squash growing in here before. So these lima beans will do well here. They will help also yeah, a little bit fix nitrogen in this soil, which it doesn't really need. But uh, always good to have nitrogen fixing crops. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little with my scuffle hoe. And I'm going to plant three rows of lima beans here. Three rows is all I need. There we go. Okay, I've come inside to take a break because it's just so hot. Got to work in little uh, manageable spurts. If uh, you know, if you're susceptible to hot weather, you got to work in short spurts and come in and cool off. Get hydrated. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. Um, it's advisable to work in the evenings when the shade is over the garden. But I've got things to do this evening. Need to get this done. Um, I got to cook some tomatoes for you guys and show you a cooking video this evening. So uh, got to get this done during the heat of the day. Here's the bean I'm going to plant. This is the Christmas lima bean. Uh, lima beans grow well in the heat. They're one of the beans that uh, actually thrive in the heat and I've grown this before. It's a prolific heavy producer. Look at these beans. Let me show you some of these. They are beautiful speckled beans. They're kind of a purple and white. When you cook them of course they turn uh, cream colored or brown but uh, that's, how, that's how they look. That's how big they are. These are some good looking beans. So we're going to go and plant these. Three rows of them in the garden and that will keep us into some produce in the summer at the heat at the height of summer and I found these not to be very susceptible to many pests um, I did get a little touch of spider mites last year but it was pretty hot and uh, those spider mites didn't thrive too well and I caught them in time so uh, let's go plant some lima beans well here we are our seeds are about an inch long normally you plant seeds twice as deep as they are long but the instructions say just go about an inch deep so that's what we'll do with these. An inch deep, I'll just push them in right up about that deep on my knuckle and we'll call it good. I've put my garden hoe along the row that I want so that will be my guide. So let's get some of these seeds in. They say you should space them uh, every two inches and the rows should be 36 to 48 inches apart. I like to condense that down to about 24 inches apart. Uh, it seems to work for me. Alright, let's get planting. I'm just going to lay them on the surface, about four inches apart. I'll come back and push them in in a moment. This gives me an idea to see how many seeds I've got and if they will actually fill the space that I need them to fill. And if I don't have enough seeds, I've got another variety that I can plug in right next to it. This bean was very surprising to me because all my life I thought I didn't like lima beans. But when I cooked some of these, they were delicious, absolutely delicious. All right, come around the other side. All right, let's get our third row in, right about here. I'm going to be about right there. That's really close to my peppers, but that's okay. The peppers will do fine. Now, part of the benefit of going and hoeing your soil, like I said, was to get a nice seed bed so that we can just push these seeds in with little or no trouble. Now, I don't pay any attention to the orientation of the seed. The seeds will find their way. Some gardeners suggest that you pay attention to the top or the bottom of the seed. I don't think it matters so much. Just push them down like so, about an inch. And just cover them over. All right, there's our lima bean bed, that little square. It looks a whole lot better than it did. Just burn those weeds down. And uh, yeah, like I said, they'll come back, but uh, we knocked them back for a while. Makes me feel better. Phoebe, what are you doing over by the beets, huh? What are you doing? You looking for something to eat? Phoebe's discovered she likes tomatoes. Well, she's always known it, but I think she rediscovers it every year. You stealing my tomatoes? Huh? Hey, let's go inside. Boy, am I sweaty. 
but that's okay. All right, I've got this raised bed over here in which I planted onions. I've got a few onions, the last remainder of them out here drying in the sun. We'll just move them down a little bit. I'm gonna put my okra down here. This is a pretty coarse uh, kind of potting type mix on top here, but I think it'll do just fine if we keep it moist. Okra is one of those seeds that some, some seed companies suggest you soak them overnight, get them soft and get them uh, pre-moisturized. You want that, that water to penetrate the hard shell. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just come out twice a day and keep my seeds watered. Uh, okra, one of those summer crops it will just keep growing and growing for you. So, let me kind of get myself some fine mix up to the surface here. This is Annie Oakley. It is an open pollinated okra, which, which means it'll, it'll come true to type, but it's derived from a hybrid called Annie Oakley too. The Experimental Farm Network has these seeds. It is a green spineless okra, and I'm going to begin growing this in this little raised bed over here. By putting the seeds about about eight inches apart, I might have to thin, but I've grown seeds, okra, in pots before. Four plants to a about an 18 inch wide pot and they grew fine. So I'm just gonna take these seeds and push them in. Kind of put some fine material over them. And I'm only going in, oh, not very deep about half an inch. That, that might be a little deep for okra. They're tiny little seeds. But I need this stuff to, I need these seeds to have good contact with this finer material, which is just under this mulch layer. It's almost like a mulch. This might be too fine and I might not have success, but I'm gonna try it. I'm also gonna plant some okra in my garden where the soil is certainly able to sprout and germinate these plants. So I'm just gonna stick them in here the soil's really dry, really hot, so it's really easy to put them in. Then we're going to water it in really well. What we're doing is making use of our garden, overlapping the seasons. It uh, is still technically my spring garden, but now that we're putting in summer crops, it is an overlap garden, so to speak. So I'm not going to waste all my seeds right here in case these don't come up, but I wanted to show you that now is the time to start okra and I'm going to put these in, let's water them in and we'll call this done for right now, the rest of my okra will go in elsewhere. That's right, good hot day, huh? That's nice, huh? Holy mackerel, that's a nice breeze. Got a big storm cloud blowing over the sun. Just in time, because man, I'm, I'm done, I'm spent. It's hot. Well, hey, it's, it is hot, and that's what we do during the hot season. We get out, we work a little bit here and there, clear out a section of our garden that's done, and put in heat-loving crops. If you'd like to know what grows well in the summer heat, I have a video that's my top 10, plus a bonus favorite crops for high heat summers. You can link that, you can find that video linked right up there. So, there we go. I will have a full garden tour coming up in the next several days, uh, beginning of June garden tour. Take a look around and see what's going on elsewhere in the garden. But uh, there it is, that's how we transition slowly between spring and summer, and uh, that's how we kind of prepare our beds. So if you'd like to have any of your gardening questions answered, uh, maybe I can answer them, I'll give it a try. Leave me a comment below, I always read the comments. And with so many subscribers now, it's hard to answer all of the comments, but I do try to answer the question. So if you've got a question, drop it below. I'll try to answer it. Thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.